Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, this is Ada Doebele. It is a joy to come to you from Adornment Ministries. Now we thank you God for the for the word. Holy Spirit, I ask that uh, none, of that, uh, none of me may come out, that you may articulate this word to your people and give them understanding in the way that it's meant for them to understand. In Jesus' name is my prayer and belief. Amen. Now, first of all, I need to thank our, view subs our new subscribers vehemently, even the old ones who have remained. This is the Lord's doing. The Lord instructed me not to ask people to subscribe anymore. I used to do that uh, earlier. And he said, no, it is about him. It's uh, not about me. So I'm glad that uh, you are subscribing because the new subscribers have subscribed as led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm really thankful for you for being obedient. And even our old subscribers, I'm really, really thankful. Uh, we praise God for that. And uh, so today I have a prophetic word. And uh, before I say what the Lord told me, I'll, I'll share with you the visions. The first vision, I was, uh, I stepped, I reached a glass door. And as I stepped on the, on the just next to the door, uh, the door had a bar, which normally you find such doors in, in hospitals or public places. It was a glass door with metal in, in a metal frame. Uh, so it had a bar. So even before I raised my hand to hold on to that bar, of which I later realized that you cannot open it from the outside, someone pressed the, the, a, a button from the inside and the door opened towards me, towards the outside. And uh, yeah, so I knew that this door you cannot open from the inside. From the outside, sorry, it had to be opened from the inside. And then the next vision, I was flying over a beautiful, beautiful garden. It was so beautiful. And so I, I said, I, I was like, wow, garden. And I was told, garden of peace, garden of peace. And uh, when I, I, I was done flying, I, 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 I came down and, and uh, as I looked at the garden now, it was, uh, when I was uh, up there, it, it, it had all beautiful colors. It was, it was beautiful. It was heavenly. So when I got down and I was looking at it, it was uh, blackish and grayish and, and whitish. Not very interesting, but still very, very beautiful. And so the Lord gave me understanding that that's, that was his view, the view that I was seeing from above, the, spirit, the, the view, how the Lord views us, how the things that he has for us. But when we are down here, when you look at them sometimes, most times, if you are anything like me, we, we, we devalue them. We, we don't really see the beauty in them. And so then yesterday the Lord told me, enter into my rest. Enter into my rest, meaning we should enter into God's rest. And with that, he gave me this scripture. Um, he gave me scripture in uh, First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. And uh, the title of, uh, uh, over that chapter is David becomes king over Israel. And I'll read, All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while, while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people, Israel, and you will become their ruler. Verse 3 says that when all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, as the Lord had promised through Samuel. Verse 4 says that David and all the Israelites marched to the Jerusalem, that is Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, you will not get in here. The Jebusites said to them, you will not get in here. Nevertheless, nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. Verse 7 says that David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. I'll read verse 9 again. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. So what is rest? God's rest in this uh, scripture which he gave us, we see now people coming to David themselves. David did not go to ask them that, oh, Samuel, uh, you know, anointed me for, for kingship or whatever. They came to him themselves. When you are in God's rest, God gives you favor with, with man and, and himself, that he, he fights for you. 
he fights for you. You see that uh, the Jebusites uh, threatened David, but what happened? He conquered them and and uh, and he he he's began. He took over the city and uh, built it, and uh, he became more and more powerful because the Lord of Might was with him. What else do we notice for David to enter this rest? We notice that he kept his vow. God is very particular with vows that we make. When you have made a vow, if you are in this season, you, you know that uh, your rest time is now. You should understand that you must keep your vows. You must uh, do what you have promised God to do so that you may enter his rest. Because how do we enter rest? Rest, we enter through obedience and uh, be, being, uh, having faith. We know that, uh, so here, as I've said, the key points to, to, to notice that uh, David found favor with everyone and he found power over his, his enemies and he kept his vow and he became more and more powerful because the Lord was with him. The Lord Almighty was with him. So how do you enter this rest? Because rest is a place of working while resting. You work in rest. You don't struggle anymore. How do you enter this rest? The entering this rest, the, the, uh, as we know that the Lord denied the Israelites who left Egypt to enter rest out of disobedience and being faithless. You know how they used to, with a small problem, they wanted to go back to Egypt. With a small problem, they wanted to go back to Egypt. When you decide to walk with God, you must fix your eyes. And so God even uh, 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 vowed, hmm? he took an oath that they'd never enter his rest. His rest was, their rest was in Canaan. Our rest is in our promised land, your purpose. And so he, he, that, that happened, the, the, including Moses. He was not able to enter into Canaan. This season, God has asked us to enter his rest. And for that to happen, we have to have faith, like I've said, because faith is what catapults you to that. We have read in scripture that God, without faith, you cannot please. It is impossible to please God. And of course, if you cannot please God, he will not give you rest. And so in, uh, in Matthew chapter, it's Matthew chapter 10, 11, going to 12, so, sorry, I'll just read from, from chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, and it reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The burden that God gives us is very light, because he gives us a, a tailored burden for each one of us and he uh, accords us his grace that we are able to bear that burden at ease in rest to work from a place of rest in hebrews we hear from uh, in chapter 4 in chapter 4 verse 3 4 verse 10 especially i'll make it short for anyone who enters god's rest also rests from their works just as god did from his let, verse 11 says, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Rest is a wonderful place to be, brethren. Uh, for me, I'm noticing one thing. The Lord is enhancing uh, my prophetic uh, gift as, as, I, as I enter his rest. Because uh, now even when, I'm, for example, when a text comes into the phone, I get to know who is sending that text. So that if I'm busy, if I know that it's not something that is urgent, I would rush to the phone, you know. And this is really exciting. I, I trust I was almost uh, afraid. But now I'm realizing that it's not about me. It's about his grace. And he's able to, he enables us to do that. So, as I've said, if you are at that place where you have been seeking God, we are in the promise, we are stepping into the promised land, we are in the promised land ideally, but you need to rest from your works. Your works is struggling, running here and there, looking for a, for a word, looking for this and that, a, a, a prophecy, a word. You, when you're working from rest, for example, if this word is for you, you will just find yourself here. God will bring this message to you. You'll just be, have the urge or it will pass on your screen and you'll have the urge to, to watch it. When you are in God's rest, you don't struggle. 
struggle diminishes you become at peace you, you become peaceful and and you work from that place and of course you need faith you have to believe that god exists and that he's a rewarder of those who seek him diligently so the key words here you have to have faith you have to be obedient you have to seek god diligently and you have to keep your vows you have to keep your vows to god uh, because god always uh, 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 enters into a covenant with us when he starts working with us when you start asking for god to come into your life to do something for you usually you, we promise most of the time we do it without knowing i told you that i promised god that if he healed my daughter i would do anything that he wanted me to do and then i forgot about it but he healed my daughter and of course god does not forget so years later here i am i try to run away i try to hide but god does not uh, rush you <laughs> it's your own foolishness because you you keep away you remember moses he ran away into the wilderness uh, and uh, he stayed away for 40 years uh, uh, shepherding uh, uh, you know uh, animals hmm? uh, running trying to run away but even after those 40 years the lord still appeared to him and sent him so he had to accomplish his mission his purpose so let us enter into the rest let us enter into god's rest together uh, may your faith help you to enter into god's rest obedience let us be obedient and this in jesus name that is my prayer that i pray amen a delightful week